on World News Tonight. Quelling the unrest, China continues to push forward with their zero-COVID policy despite opposition from the rest of the world. Trade tensions, the US's Inflation Reduction Act is a cause for concern in Europe. Could this move spark a future trade war? Find out tonight. Historic corruption, Hawaii's Mauna Loa awakes from dormancy following 40 years of silence. And Parisian paradise, take a stroll under giant displays of fauna and flora along the city path. This is Adhaderana World News Tonight, reporting from Colombo. Here is Anuradhi Vikramasinghe. Good evening and thank you for joining us on World News. Much of the world is watching with jaws dropped as Chinese ruling authorities face a growing and rare public uprising. However, China has moved quickly to suppress demonstrations, deploying police forces at key protest sites and tightening online censorship. Dozens of protesters gathered in Hong Kong on Monday to show solidarity with rare displays of defiance in mainland China over the weekend. In a city that is no stranger to anti-government protests, people brought flowers and candles. I'm here because I don't quite agree with mainland China's policies on COVID, says this resident. Small-scale vigils and protests have popped up in a number of cities around the world, following extraordinary scenes of protests in China over the weekend. A display of unprecedented civil disobedience since leader Xi Jinping assumed power a decade ago. The catalyst for demonstrations was an apartment fire in China's Xinjiang region that killed 10 people. Many speculated that COVID curbs had hindered rescue, which city officials denied. China's strict COVID policy has become a lightning rod for frustration, although it has kept the country's death toll much lower than many other countries. In Sydney, about 200 people gathered outside its town hall to show support for protesters. We as Australians have to be a voice for China. Similar scenes unfolded in London and Tokyo over the weekend. On Monday, people gathered outside the U.S. State Department in Washington, with White House National Security spokesperson John Kirby adding this. Uh, our message to peaceful protesters around the world uh, is the same and, and consistent. People should be allowed uh, uh, the, the, the right to assemble and to peacefully protest policies or laws or dictates that, uh, that they take issue with. And British Foreign Secretary James Cleverly issued this warning. Protests against the Chinese government are rare. And when they do happen, I think the world should take notice. But I think the Chinese government should take notice. Still, from his home in Portugal, Chinese artist and dissident Ai Weiwei said he was skeptical about protests shaking the government. So it's very easy to, to just uh, arrest them and move on. On Monday, a Chinese foreign ministry spokesperson said Beijing was not aware of any protests abroad calling for an end to its zero COVID policy. Asked about protests at home, he said the question did not, quote, reflect what actually happened, adding that China believed the fight against COVID would be successful with the leadership of the party and the cooperation of the people. Over in the war in Ukraine, threats and allegations about the possible use of nuclear, chemical and biological weapons have been traded since the war in Ukraine began in February, but with no evidence they have been deployed. Russia's invasion of Ukraine has increased the threat of the use of weapons of mass destruction, including chemical munitions, according to the head of the world's toxic arms watchdog. The Organization for the Prohibition of Chemical Weapons Summit opened in The Hague today with a stark warning. It has exacerbated existing tensions to a point where unity of the international community on common global challenges related to international security and peace cannot be presumed. Russia and Ukraine have accused each other of the possible use of chemical and biological warfare since the start of the conflict in Ukraine last February. Moscow claims that Kyiv tried to develop a biological weapons program together with the United States, but neither side has presented credible evidence so far. 
The setbacks suffered by the Russian army on the battlefield have rekindled fears of Moscow's use of weapons of mass destruction in Ukraine. Last week, Russia test-fired its new intercontinental ballistic missile just days after the Kremlin insisted that using nuclear weapons in Ukraine was out of the question. There has been controversy stirring up since the U.S. Congress passed the Inflation Reduction Act. Brussels feared that the act backs out EU companies from the U.S. market. However, experts urged the EU to not go into a trade war. This is how Joe Biden tries to style himself as champion of American industrial ingenuity and as protector of American interests. But it's creating serious friction with his European allies. The Inflation Reduction Act that Congress passed earlier this year subsidizes green technologies made in the USA, like electric cars, energy-intensive industries and renewables to the tune of $370 billion. But the European Union is crying foul. Brussels fears that EU companies are being shut out of the US market in a blatant twist of international trade rules. What we are asking for is uh, uh, fairness. Uh, we want and expect European companies and exports uh, uh, to be treated in the same way uh, in the US as American companies and exports are treated in uh, Europe. The Inflation Reduction Act comes into force in January. It's why a joint EU-US task force has been negotiating possible exemptions for European companies for weeks now. But so far, a deal remains elusive. Experts are more than skeptical that a compromise can be found, given that the US has long thrown free trade principles overboard. And Europe isn't in the strongest of positions. The last thing we want to do right now, the, the dumbest thing we can do, is to start a trade war. Uh, because we are in a weak position. Uh, uh, that's simply the reality. I think there could be a case... Uh, uh, in a targeted, uh, limited manner to allow a more lenient use of subsidies, public subsidies, it, towards the green transition uh, 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 to ensure that it happens as soon as possible and to ensure that European businesses uh, are able to fully compete. But such European countermeasures are politically dangerous, given that the EU has become heavily dependent on the US when it comes to arming Ukraine and supplying liquefied natural gas to make up for its lost deliveries from Russia. Meanwhile, Germany has outlined plans to allow people who live in the country to become citizens faster. This comes as German Chancellor Olaf Scholz called for reforms to the country's citizenship rules. The German government wants to make it easier for foreign residents living in Germany to obtain German citizenship. Until now, the rule was anyone who has lived in the country for at least eight years can submit an application to obtain a German passport. But that's about to change. In future, the Traffic Light Coalition wants to grant citizenship to people who have lived in Germany for five years and in exceptional cases after three years. Interior Minister Nancy Faeser says that a reform of the citizenship law is overdue. She sees it as an opportunity to strengthen social cohesion. But CDU leader Friedrich Merz has expressed doubts. I have great reservations about dealing with citizenship law the way the coalition is doing. Citizenship is something very valuable and it must be handled with care. Dual citizenship should not be the rule but the exception. But Chancellor Olaf Scholz's SPD party argues that it is in the interest of foreign residents who want to become a part of German society. This will prevent foreigners from living as a parallel group with fewer rights alongside German citizens. That's why this is clearly very advantageous. Germany is and must be an immigration country. In 2021, almost 132,000 people were granted German citizenship, about a fifth more than the year before. Most of them were of Syrian origin, followed by Turkish and Romanian. Twitter has been facing a wave of obstacles since the takeover and to add on to it, Elon Musk targeted Apple in a series of tweets saying that the company has threatened to block Twitter Incorporated from its app store without giving any reason for it. Twitter owner Elon Musk accused Apple of threatening to block Twitter from its app store without saying why in a series of tweets on Monday. The world's richest person also tweeted, quote, Apple has mostly stopped advertising on Twitter. Do they hate free speech in America? Musk tagged Apple CEO Tim Cook in another tweet asking, what's going on here? 
Musk said the iPhone maker was pressuring Twitter, which has reinstated previously banned accounts, over content moderation demands. Such an action would not be unusual, as Apple has routinely enforced its rules that led to the removal of conservative-leaning apps such as Gab and Parler from its app store. Apple, however, did not immediately respond to requests for comment. According to ad measurement firm Pathmatics, Apple has significantly decreased its weekly advertising on Twitter since Musk inked the deal for the social media platform. There's been a pattern since the acquisition. A growing list of companies have stopped or paused advertising on Twitter, which relies on ad sales for about 90 percent of its revenue. Musk, a self-described free speech absolutist, said earlier this month that Twitter had seen a massive drop in revenue and blamed activist groups for pressuring advertisers. Let's go in for a short commercial break. More world news on the other side. Welcome back to World News Tonight. The first World Cup in the Middle East has become a showcase for the political tensions crisscrossing one of the world's most volatile regions and the ambiguous role often played by host nation Qatar in its crises. It's the first World Cup held in the Middle East and the region's politics are never far away. Iran's protests, Arab fans' pro-Palestinian sympathies and host nation Qatar's own ambiguous diplomacy have all been under the spotlight. Iran's matches have been the most politically charged, both on the pitch, when the Iranian team refrained from singing the national anthem, and off it. A headache for Qatar, which has good ties with Tehran. Ahead of Iran's first match, security denied entry to fans carrying Iran's pre-revolution flag and T-shirts with the slogan, Woman, Life, Freedom, and Mahsa Amini the young woman whose death in custody sparked the current protests. Take storage. We have, no, we have nothing else to wear. What do we wear? You go to the mall and buy a T-shirt. Iranian-American fan Shayan Khosravani shows Iran's pre-revolution flag banned inside the country. He says he has been told to hide it. I wanted to come to a World Cup to... Um, support the people of Iran because we know it was a, it's a great opportunity to speak for them. We know the national team is not speaking for them, so we kind of wanted to put them in shame too, telling them like, hey, we come across the whole world to just use this opportunity to tell you guys and the rest of the world like, hey, what's happening in Iran is messed up, like you guys need to back people up. Pro-Palestinian sentiments are also on display. Qatari players have worn pro-Palestinian armbands, and this Israeli journalist, reporting from Qatar, met a cold response from Arab fans. <laughs> Qatar wants a smooth tournament that will cement its role on the global stage and in the Middle East. It's something of a regional maverick. It hosts the Palestinian Islamist group Hamas, but allowed Israeli fans to fly in for the first time. It has given a platform to Islamist dissidents deemed a threat by Saudi Arabia and befriended Riyadh's foe, Iran. The largest U.S. military base in the region is here. Omar Barakat is a soccer coach for the Palestinian team, which didn't make the tournament. He says security staff have allowed him into matches wearing the Palestinian flag. It is the Arab cause. We've seen many non-Palestinians wearing the flag, non-Arabs wearing the flag. I've had this is my fourth flag. I've, I've given away four, and I've let people borrow like a lot of flags during the match just for a photo and stuff. So it is a political statement, and we're proud of it. Such loyalties and rivalries have added to the political dimensions of a tournament already mired in controversy over the treatment of migrant workers and LGBT plus rights. Now, for the first time in nearly four decades, Hawaii's Mauna Loa, which is the largest volcano in the world, has erupted. Officials warn the people on the island just in case the lava slips down the slope. The skies of Hawaii's Big Island turned a hellish bright red on Sunday as the world's largest active volcano, Mauna Loa, began erupting for the first time since 1984, ending its longest quiet period in recorded history. The U.S. Geological Service says for now the lava is contained within the summit, but they have warned residents that volcanic gases and fine ash may drift their way. Some areas of the Big Island were under an ashfall advisory issued by the National Weather Service.
Mauna Loa rises 13,679 feet above the Pacific Ocean. It's part of the chain of volcanoes that formed the islands of Hawaii. It last erupted in March and April of 1984, sending a flow of lava within five miles of the island's largest city. Scientists like Eric Clemetti of Denison University have been on alert after several earthquakes hit the area. People have been expecting that Mauna Loa would erupt again only because it's erupted a lot. Um, and this is a, a pretty long period of quiet. Hawaii's Emergency Management Agency has not yet issued any evacuation orders. They have, however, opened two shelters on the island as a precaution, but also emphasize that there are no signs that lava will threaten populated areas. The FTX exchange collapse has taken yet another victim on the blockchain. BlockFi, a cryptocurrency lender affiliated with FTX, has filed for bankruptcy following exposure to the recent FTX collapse. Another cryptocurrency firm with ties to FTX has fallen. BlockFi filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy in a New Jersey court on Monday. It's the latest casualty in the industry following the spectacular collapse of the FTX exchange earlier this month. BlockFi was particularly entangled with the exchange. The firm said its substantial exposure through loans to Alameda, a crypto trading firm affiliated with FTX, had sparked a liquidity crisis. It also had cryptocurrencies held on FTX's platform that became trapped there. In the filing, BlockFi listed its assets and liabilities as being between $1 to $10 billion, with more than 100,000 creditors. The filing comes as crypto prices have plummeted. The price of Bitcoin, the most popular digital currency, is down more than 70% from a 2021 peak. BlockFi on Monday also sued a holding company for the FTX founder, Sam Bankman-Fried. It is seeking to recover shares in Robin Hood that had allegedly been pledged as collateral just days before FTX collapsed. BlockFi's first bankruptcy hearing is scheduled to take place on Tuesday. We have some good news for you. Many people would pay good money to find a shortcut to weight loss without working out or going on a diet. One scientific and proven way is by taking a newly developed diabetes treatment. Experts say the key mechanism is the ability to stimulate insulin. A man in his late 30s, surnamed Kim, is considering using weight loss pills after frequent company dinners and late night snacks. I'm working out and watching my diet, but it's tough because of my working habits. I'm considering taking weight loss pills because I'm not losing as much weight as I'd like. With demand for fat-burning medications skyrocketing worldwide, a handful of drug makers are expected to push some of their weight loss products already on the market. During clinical trials, a fat-burning drug approved in the U.S. in 2014 showed that it boosted weight loss by 8% on average when taking one pill every day for 56 weeks. An upgraded version, newly approved last year, boosts weight loss by 15% when injected once a week for 68 weeks. Interestingly, these medicines were initially developed as treatments for diabetes. But they're all waiting for approval as weight loss pills or have received it already. These medicines all play a similar role as a hormone called GLP-1, which lowers blood sugar levels by stimulating insulin release. That way, the brain releases a specific signal that relieves hunger and reduces appetite. That's why they are both a treatment for diabetes and an effective weight loss supplement. Although it may sound complex and difficult, GLP-1 is what causes the reduced appetite. The treatment also plays the role of GIP, which stimulates insulin. This has a larger impact through an effect that we are yet to find out what it really actually is. While the drugs guarantee weight loss without exercising or being on a health-conscious diet, they can cause several side effects such as nausea and vomiting. Experts also warn that people can put the weight back on again once they stop taking these weight loss supplements. Welcome back and for more news, let's take you around the world in a minute. British Prime Minister Rishi Sunak said the so-called golden era of relations with China was over, saying Beijing's systematic challenge to Britain's interests and values were growing more cute. Former US Secretary of State Hillary Clinton called on the public and media to not forget or ignore the crackdown on Iranian women and girls, saying their fight is our fight. Iran has been gripped by protests since the death of 22-year-old Masa Amini in September. 
Wall Street tumbled as protests in major Chinese cities against strict COVID policies sparked concerns about the global economy. NATO's chief Jens Stoltenberg said the alliance would not pull back in its support for Ukraine, calling on partners to pledge more winter aid for Kyiv as it braced itself for more cold and darkness due to Russian attacks on infrastructure. A Trumpist union in South Korea held 16 rallies nationwide, including a head-shaving protest, where hundreds of truck drivers pledged to continue defying the government's start work order and to demand minimum pay system. And that is all from us here at World News Tonight. Join us again tomorrow as we keep you up to date with the latest from around the world. In case you missed any of the stories tonight, you can watch the whole program on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash English. We leave you tonight with visuals of giant spiders, centipedes and even bedbugs greeting visitors at a Paris garden with biodiversity as a theme during this winter season. Thank you for watching. Have a great night.